Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make brownies. So the first thing we need to do is place five ounces, that's 150 grams, of semi-sweet chocolate that's been chopped in a heat-proof bowl. And to that, add, add one half cup, that's 113 grams, of butter, and have that at room temperature. And I've just chopped it into small pieces. And then we're just going to place this over a saucepan of simmering water and melt the two together. Okay, our chocolate is all melted and it's nice and smooth. So I'm just going to remove this from the heat and we'll add the rest of the ingredients. So now we're just going to add the rest of the ingredients right in this bowl that we melted the chocolate. It's nice and easy. So the first thing is to add one cup 200 grams of granulated white sugar along with uh, two tablespoons, about 15 grams of cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder. You can use either the regular unsweetened or Dutch process, whichever one you have in the house. And just gently, you can use a whisk or a rubber spatula just to stir it in, kind of dissolve the sugar a bit. Now the flavor of these brownies will depend on the, the uh, semi-sweet chocolate you melted plus the cocoa powder. Okay, and next I'm going to just uh, whisk in one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And then we're going to take three large eggs, have them at room temperature, and I'm going to whisk in each one, one at a time, and just whisk that in. one. We're not using an electric mixer for this because we don't want to uh, incorporate too much air into the uh, brownie batter. So we want a nice dense but yet moist brownie. And there's not going to be any baking powder or baking soda because we don't want them to rise too much. Okay. So as you do this, it'll start to get a little harder to whisk. So our arm gets a bit of a workout, which is good. And then I'm going to add a, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Now, if you used uh, a regular salted butter instead of unsalted butter, I would just leave out that uh, salt. And then I'm going to just whisk in three quarters of a cup, that's 95 grams of uh, all-purpose flour. I'm going to switch over and just use my rubber spatula for this. And then if you like, which I'm going to do here, I'm going to uh, stir in three quarters of a cup, that's about 125 grams of semi-sweet chocolate chips. It gives a nice crunch. You could add uh, some nuts instead, or if you want uh, just a smooth brownie textured, you can just leave that the chocolate chips out. Okay, and that's it. Now we need a eight inch, that's 20 centimeter um, square pan, and just either butter or spray with a nonstick uh, vegetable spray. And I like to line the bottom of the pan with a peach, piece of uh, either parchment paper or wax paper. And then just pour the batter in there. Now this will give us a real nice moist brownie. And the top of the brownies will get quite like hard with a cracked surface. Just smooth the top. Now we're going to bake these in a uh, 350 degree, that's Fahrenheit, that's 180 degrees Celsius oven, for about 30 minutes. 
Um, but I would check them after 25 minutes because what we want is when we put a toothpick into the center, we want it to come out with moist crumbs. We don't want it to be clean because then they'll be over baked and a little dry. So check them after about 25 minutes. Okay. Okay, our brownies are now done. As you can see, the uh, top is dry and it's a little cracking and the toothpick inserted into the center will come out with some moist crumbs. So we're just gonna let this sit on the wire rack to cool to room temperature and then we'll cut one. So let's cut the brownies. I like to use a sharp paring knife and just cut down like so. And then just have a paper towel or cloth and wipe it off between cuts. Cut these as big or as small as you like. I like fairly large brownies. So I think I get 16 out of this pan. Then just use a knife or an offset spatula. See if we can get the first one's always the hardest to get out. They're nice and moist and the top of the brownie is quite dry and cracked. You can store these for several days at either room temperature or refrigerated or they can even be frozen. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.